our first session for today, official session, let's say it like that, is Wikidata for Education, aligning Wikimedia projects with school curricula. Um, today here with us is Ukaina, uh, but Justice couldn't be here because of the visa problem, but he uh, prepared a video for us, so we'll be we will be able to um, see uh, his perspective. perspective. So this session discusses a pilot project uh, using Wikidata to digitalize the school curricula um, in Ghana. So it can be easily accessible by, by teachers, students, uh, researchers, um, um, in order to uh, achieve their learning objectives. I'll give the word to Sukaina and um, you enjoy. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. And uh, as uh, Ivana discussed, I will be presenting uh, a very close project to my heart. It's called Wikidata for Education. And the main goal behind this project is to digitalize curriculums. Yeah, I know it's a big word, but you will understand more in depth what we're aiming for behind this project. So to start with, I will go with an overview of this project to have an idea about what is this project about and what was the you know, end goal of it. This is like the summary or steps. We can skip that slide and then I can just, you know, start by giving you a small story or like a snapshot behind this project. So what is this project about? Um, Wikidata for Education was an initiative that aims to improve the world's ability to access relevant data about school curriculum and to simplify and automate um, aligning open educational resources but like how it's via like digitalizing curriculums. I will tell you like a small story like behind what happened during COVID. So during COVID, we had 1.6 million students that were out of school, right? Many schools shut down and then people were like freaked out when they've seen these numbers and they wanted to help somehow. But the challenge was that they couldn't know how. Okay, let's say someone from UNESCO wanted to support education somewhere in the world. And let's pick Ghana as an example. They decided to help Ghana somehow, but there is a lack in information. They didn't know what Ghana teaches. We don't have any information online about what is this curriculum about. What do they teach in high school? What do they teach in primary school? We want to help, but we don't know how. We don't even know what they are teaching. So many, many challenges appeared during COVID. Many people wanted to help. Many organizations wanted to help and support education, but they had no clue about curriculums or what each part of the world teaches in their schools. So this is where this project came from. Like we wanted to open that door. We wanted to facilitate this kind of projects to arise in and appear. And luckily we have something called Wikidata. So we wanted to digitalize, to digitalize curriculums and therefore, we needed a structured way to do that. And luckily, we have something called Wikidata. And as we guys, like, as everyone knows, it's a central storage for structured data. So we were lucky enough to have this infrastructure that we could use within our ecosystem to upload and digitalize curriculum. So yeah, we have it. <laughs> and once we knew that it's a possible thing to do, we started to think about the next step, which is, okay, now we have the infrastructure, but we need to digitalize the curriculum. We need to convert curriculums into more of a structured data. As you might know, curriculums are presented in a textual way. For example, in my country, curriculums are shared via PDFs in words with teachers. So every year, the government or like the Ministry of Education sends PDFs to school, schools and teachers, and they're like telling them, hey, this is the curriculum that you need to follow, so please do that. But as an outsider, you wouldn't know about these curriculums. It's not available online. It's not available in structured data. So that's the main challenge, I think, of most of curriculums now in, in like different parts of the world. They are like presented or like shared in a non-structured way, in a more of like textual way, documents, PDFs, sometimes online on like governmental officials' websites, and it's not easy to access. So the next step for us was actually, we need to transfer this information into more of a structured data. Therefore, we thought of, we need a data model for this. We cannot use the curriculums as they are. So yes, why modeling? Like why even thinking about this? I will like present like few use cases 
and then you can also like reflect with me to understand why this is important. Okay, let's start with the first one. Let's say I'm a Wikimedian. I like to edit articles, but I heard about what happened during COVID and I wanted to support like high school education in my country, but I have no idea which article is linked to which curriculum in high school in my country. I want to edit articles, but I don't know which one to edit. So I need a query. I need to do something to be able to list the articles that I might just focus on to support a specific level of education. And that was not possible before. But now with this project, it's possible. You can now know which articles are linked to which level, which curriculum, which country, and you can just focus on these, improve them. And by that, you will be supporting education in that country. Second use case that I can think of. Let's say I'm a school teacher and uh, I'm planning to innovate in my course. I want to create a plan for my course. But the problem with that is that I don't know if Wikipedia can help me with that. I don't know which articles on Wikipedia are linked to my course. Let's say I'm teaching mathematics, okay? And I would like to know which articles on Wikipedia are aligned with what I'm teaching. So I have no idea. But with this project again, it's possible. You can go as a teacher, have an interface like a website, an app, and then with a few clicks, you can know which articles or like with a few, with like one query, you can know which articles are aligned with the course that you are teaching. And you can just take these links, read the articles, and then you have a bunch of, you know, information that you can use to restructure your course to like enrich your course content. Third use case that I can think of. Let's say I'm a researcher, okay? And uh, my mission is to improve education in Africa. And to do so, I need a comparative analysis to do so, which means I need to compare between curriculums. Okay, I know I have access to curriculums in my country, but I have no idea about curriculums in other countries. I cannot compare my curriculum with other curriculums. But again, with this project, if we had this data available somewhere, we can just have a query a website and any researcher can just go get the data and start their like analysis and in, in com comparatives between curriculums. A fourth use case, let's say I'm a web developer, okay? And I've been always thinking about building a platform to facilitate access to curriculum, but where is the data? I'm a good developer, but I have no data. I don't know where I can find this data. Well, luckily we can, it can be available now on Wikidata, and you can just use that infrastructure again and build up on that a website that can easily help you to have an innovative idea and like a website that anyone on, in the world can use. So I, I hope that you can sense the importance of digitalizing curriculums and having that available on Wikidata. Now, where are we on this project now? What have we done so far? So the first stage was actually to collect different curriculums from different parts of the world, just to have like a first step analysis to see what are the common points between these curriculums? What are the differences between these curriculums? How can we modelize this? So that's what we've done. We've took like multiple, like in total four curriculums. We, did, we studied these things and then we come up with a model that could at the same time save the differences, but is more generic, like it can, be used in different parts of the world, but at the same time, it will save the specific, like the special things or like the local, the, you know, the identity of each curriculum. The second step was coming up with a data model. So after doing these analysis, we build it, we build it like a data model that was able to spot all the important information of the curriculums. And after that, we uploaded the, the data. And for that, we picked one example, which is Ghana's curriculum for high school. We just picked that. And then we uploaded the data, respecting the data model that we developed. And now we have Ghana's curriculum on Wikidata, and it's available. And using that, we managed to do some comparative analysis. And we realized that actually we do have missing articles that are aligned with some curriculums on Wikipedia. We have some articles in only English, but we need them in local languages to support Ghana's education. So we already started to sense the importance of what we've done. Only by having this tiny part of the curriculum on Wikidata, we were able to do a lot of things. We were able to already improve the content that is aligned with the curriculum of Ghana. 
So it's pretty impressive, yes. And the last step would be publishing a report. So that's something upcoming. You can, um, it will be published like soon once the project will be uh, finished. And uh, you can all read up into all these details and stuff. But yes, these are the major steps that we followed to uh, implement this project. Yeah, this is a sneak peek of the curriculum model. It's a bit technical, yes, but I will try to be um, a bit like, uh, I don't know, I'll try to, to easily explain it. So the first layer of the model is we always mention which curriculum are we talking about? Is it Ghana? Is it Morocco? Is it Serbia? Is it the US? Which country are we talking about? Second level is which specific level we're providing. Is it high school, primary school, secondary school? So which level are we talking about? Second layer, we're talking about which specific level is it first year, first year, second year, third year, which one? And then fourth layer, we're specifying the subject, mathematics, physics, English, social studies. And then we provide external details about which specific course title we are mentioning. Because mathematics can have like, I don't know, 10 courses or like 20. It depends on the country, it depends on their curriculum. So we are able to provide all these details in a tiny manner, like in a more structured way on Wikidata that can be easily queried and analyzed. And yeah, you can do a bunch of stuff with this data now. What is, I think, what is important about this model and something I want you to, to take away from this is this tricky thing. It's called ICED. So what is ICED? I will easily explain to you what happens. In Morocco, for example, the name of the first year of high school is different than what Ghana names it. Each country names the specific level in their own way. Let's say I'm a researcher. I just want to compare between first year of high school and five countries. How would I do that if I don't know each name of each country of each level? I don't have to do that. But luckily, UNESCO did their job and they provided some standard uh, notation or like some standard codes for each level. So these codes are introduced on Wikidata as properties and they will enable us to query the same level. You don't have to know details about what this country's name. You just need to know the code and that's it. And you can use it. And we managed to run some queries that you can check that would show you the missing uh, articles in different languages. Uh, I can show that later on. And this is actually a QR code that you can scan. It, it will show you the existing items that we have already uploaded regarding the Ghana's curriculum. You will, this will show you how much curriculums can be complex, but how also strong the connection can be between items and how many queries and ideas you can have. Now, what's next? This is important. For us to get the Wikidata property left approved. So this is something that the community needs to help on, especially the ICED one, the UNESCO one, that would help us to enable the comparison that we need to do. We have wiki uh, data properties left unimproved, and these are crucial for our project. So this is something that I would like to highlight. We need to make sure that these properties are available. Second thing, we need to add more curriculum. So please, if you have an idea or if you want to upload your country's curriculum reach out to us we can help we can collaborate and we can add more curriculum data and we would like to build an app but that's the next stage for us we would like to build an app because no we don't want our end user to be only wikimedians we need everyone in the world to use this you don't have to be technical you can just be a teacher you have an interface an app and you just with few clicks you will have access to all the information that we are providing and of course, we want to educate people, teachers, students about how to use these kind of interface like apps that we will be providing. And of course, continuous improvements because curriculum are not something static, they change over time. So we are expecting that this kind of model will be improved over time as well. And now we will be displaying a video of my uh, friend, Justice, who wasn't able to attend. And he will show you the campaign that were run by Ghana. Uh, these campaigns main goal was actually to uh, close the gap in the articles that we managed to uh, identify using our queries using the data Hi, that we everyone. uploaded welcome to the campaign session of the wikidata for education project so essentially 
Basically, this campaign is to close the content gap between the curriculum data that was uploaded to Wikidata and its corresponding Wikipedia articles. The campaign is happening in three subjects of the Ghanaian curriculum and also in three local language um, Wikipedia. So we are talking about the um, the subjects are social studies, um, science and um, ICT or computing and then the language Wikipedias are English Wikipedia, Tree Wikipedia and then Dagbani Wikipedia. Essentially this campaign is to coordinate an overarching multi-part campaign that is looking at improving content in at least two subject areas and then um, one language or one local language Wikipedia and English Wikipedia. Um, we are also supposed to we are also to organize at least three content drives for each subject area we select and then engage on average about 30 people per event. We started with the first campaign which was sort of a test for us also um, the social studies campaign. During the campaign, we had 28 editors joining us in person and throughout the, the period, we had about 42 articles created and then 317 articles edited in total by the 28 editors. Um, this was a sort of a test for us, so we tried as much as possible to learn from this um, campaign that we organized and also to essentially um, have an understanding going forward for the subsequent subjects within the campaign. These are some of the photos from the campaign. There is a link in the presentation that will take you to um, the page where you can see more about the campaign in photos. I would want to share another... My name is Nina Chachu. I am also known in Wikimedia as Abrewa Accra Lady. Um, my full-time job is head librarian at Ashesi University here in Ghana. I found it a lot more interesting than I was expecting. I was glad that it had links to Wikipedia and how to improve. Wikipedia and the information that is there on Ghana. I think it's something really great. I think it will help uh, the students, but I think it will actually help the teachers a lot. My name is Ezekiel Adi and I'm a social media strategist for the multimedia group. Um, I think it's very important, especially someone who is in this space, it makes information access easy and also helps with collaboration. And in our context, people are able to have access to much more information and creates diversity in the kind of information they put out there. My personal opinion or view of this workshop, um, I think it has really further um, brought out the really important issue about diversity and the need for multicultural content on Wikipedia. Yeah. So this is essentially the video highlight of the social studies campaign that we organized a few weeks back. We are currently in conversation with two language communities in Ghana and to create, so which is the tree and the Gabani um, Wikipedias. Essentially, we are trying to close the content gaps between the English Wikipedia and then those two local language Wikipedias. When we did the query for the um, data models that was uploaded to Wikidata, we noticed a huge gap between what was found on English Wikipedia and what was found on these two local language Wikipedia. That is why it is essential for us to at least work on this local language Wikipedia to close the content gap that is involved for, for this project. We are calling on the English Wikimedia, Wikipedia community to support this campaign essentially by looking at the edits, especially those who are working on the English Wikipedia,
to check the integrity of the edits that our participants will create and also make sure that the the participants are not unnecessarily um, having issues with vandalism issues with ip blocks and everything and also we are open to questions and suggestions on how we can make this campaign better thank you yeah thank you all for listening and thank you for um, paying attention to the presentation thank you again um, I don't know if you have time for questions do we uh, can I just yeah of course I know we didn't have like much time to like show you what we are finding with the queries and all. So today we have this common uh, interest small group discussions at like 4 p.m. So if you're interested to see like how exactly is this data showing up and how can you do comparisons, how can you see data, how can you link articles, how is this results coming up to see, find the knowledge gap between like two, like two different languages. So we invite you to one of these common interest small group discussion. So, you know, we can explore it together. We can also find some interest to like work and collaborate together. So looking forward to see some of you today at 4 p.m. Am I right, Sukena? Absolutely. Please don't miss out. We'll wait for you at 4 p.m. and we will discuss like furthermore. Yeah, well, thank you.